Hello, this is the 17th video on my multivariable calculus course. In this video, we're going to talk about Lagrange multipliers. I'm going to start with an example to see why this method of Lagrange multiplier works, and then we'll state the general idea, what we need to do, and then we'll do a few examples. Imagine you have a river and you have two towns, town A and town B. And what we want to do is we want to choose one point on this river and branch off water, I guess, uh, straight lines from that point P to the two cities. We want to minimize the total of PA plus PB. This is basically an extreme value problem, which means we want to optimize uh, the total um, uh, cost, which means we want to optimize the, minimize the total length. So how do we do that? Well, let's assume that the graph of this uh, river is given by f of x, y equals some constant, or so, rather g of x, y equals some constant. Now, if I look at the value of p of p a plus p b, the value is that p a plus p b is a constant, it gives you an ellipse. So we know an ellipse is the set of all points that the total sum to two points called foci is a constant. So as I increase this total sum, this uh, ellipse becomes larger and larger. So what is the optimal when it's definitely not here because at this point, even though the total sum is small, but we are not hitting the river. But let's say that um, ellipse is given by g of x, y, uh, f of x, y equals a constant. So when is the first place that it hits the curve? It is exactly when they are tangent. So meaning that the optimal place is when the two level curves are tangent. So when they are tangent, it means the normal line to both of them are the same. But since both of them are level curves, the normals are gradient of f and gradient of g, which means gradient of f and gradient of g must be parallel to each other, which means they would have to be scalar, scalar multiples. So gradient of f must be some scalar times gradient of g. So to summarize, suppose we want to find the maximum value of a function, it could be a function of two or three variables, f of x, y, z equals uh, f of x, y, z, under the constraint g of x, y, z equals k, where k is a constant, the Lagrange multipliers method tells us that an extreme value must satisfy gradient of f equals lambda gradient of g. In other words, it yields the following system. So f sub x is lambda g sub x, f sub y is lambda g sub y, f sub z is equal to lambda g sub z, and we also, uh, obviously, we have the initial constraint. If you have a function of two variables, you'll do the same thing, except you won't have the third equation. So let's do a couple of examples on this. So here's the first example. Find the maximum and minimum value of fxy, f of x, y equals x cubed plus 2y squared, given that constraint. So this is our f and this is our g. So g of x, y is equal to x squared plus 3y squared. So before I can find the maximum and minimum values, I'm going to show that the maximum and minimum values do exist. Well, if you look at the constraint, the constraint is an ellipse. The constraint is an ellipse which is closed and bounded. And the function f is continuous. So by extreme value theorem, uh, maximum and minimum values exist. And when we talk about maximum minimum values over a constraint, it is always absolute minimum and absolute maximum values. So now that we know it, it, they exist, we'll have to write down the system and solve. So gradient of f must be uh, lambda times gradient of g. So f sub x is 3x squared, f sub y is 4y, if we look at the um, function f, derivative of f is 3x squared with respect to x and derivative of f with respect to y is 4y, that's equal to lambda times uh, g sub x which is 2x and this one is lambda times 6y. 
and the constraint is x squared plus 3y squared equals 1. So now what we're going to have to do is solve the system, find the values, and then test them. So let's see. The first one, we can factor an x. Be careful not to divide by x, because otherwise you'll eliminate some possibilities here. So if you divide, uh, if you divide by x, you'll eliminate the possibility of x being 0. So this would give us 3x minus 2 lambda equals 0. This one gives us 2y parentheses 2 minus 3 lambda equals 0. The first one tells us either x is 0 or 3x is equal to 2 lambda. The second one tells us either y is 0 or lambda is 2 thirds. So we'll have four possibilities here. So case 1 is x equals 0 and uh, well let's start from x equals 0. x equals 0 actually we don't need anything else here. So if x is 0 then we would get 0 squared plus 3 times y squared equals 0 equals um, 1 which means y is plus or minus 1 over root 3. So the point that we get from x equals 0 is uh, uh, plus minus 1 root 3 for y. So now we'll have to evaluate the function f. So f of 0 comma plus or minus 1 root 3, 1 over root 3 is equal to 0 cubed plus, so if we go back and look at the function, it was plus 2y squared. So 2 times plus or minus 1 over root 3 squared, this is 2 thirds. So this is one possible, so this is a potential max, or in fact mean. It could be one of those two, or it could be neither. So if x is 1, then I'm done. So I can ignore this one, and I can move on to the next one. So the other case is if 3x is equal to 2 lambda. So in this case, um, for this problem, we actually don't need four, four conditions. The x equals 0 immediately uh, gives me the answer. So then I move on to this one. Now, if 3x is equal to 2 lambda, well, I'll have to look at this second one. The second one gives me y equals 0. So let's try that, y equals 0. So that gives me, well, x squared plus 0 squared equals 1. So x is plus or minus 1. So we'll have to evaluate f of plus or minus 1 and 0, which is plus minus 1 cubed, so that was the function, plus 2 times 0 squared, which is plus or minus 1. So these are also potential maximum minimum values. So they may or may not be maximum minimum values, but they are potential maximum minimum values. And the third case is if 3x is equal to 2 lambda and lambda is equal to 2 thirds. That's the second case of the bottom. So this gives us 3x equals 4 thirds, which means x is equal to 4 over 9. So we'll take this and find y from there. So we have x squared plus 3y squared equals 1. So this gives us 64 over 81 plus 3y squared equals 1. So we will evaluate 3y squared. 81 at the bottom, we get 17 over 81. And then from here, we get y squared is equal to 17 over 243. Now, we don't even need to have y, but if you want, it would be just plus or minus root 17 over 243, although we don't really need it. Now, if you look at f, f is, we have to find f of 4 ninth and plus or minus root 17 over 243. Okay, so it's 4 ninth, four ninth cubed plus this guy uh, squared, and I believe there was a coefficient. So there was this cube plus, um, what was it, plus 2 times y squared, plus 2 times this guy squared, root 17 over 243 squared. Okay, so the first one becomes 64. The second one is um, 81 is 9 squared times 9 plus 34 over 243. Okay, so what are we trying to do? We have these 
numbers, this one, plus minus one, and two thirds. Two thirds is not going to work because two thirds is between negative one and one. One is at this point the maximum. So we'll have to compare this one with one. So if you look at this quantity, you can go ahead and evaluate that if you want to. So this would be 64 over 81 times 9 plus 243 is 81 times 3. So if I multiply that by 3, I would get uh, 102 if I multiply that by 3. So this would be 81 times 9. Now the denominators are the same. And this is 166, which is less than 1. So you don't need to, to find the exact value. You just need to see whether it is less than 1 or more than 1. So the minimum is negative 1, and the maximum is 1. So let's do one more example on this. Find the minimum of this quantity given 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 6. Assume this minimum exists. OK, so now that we know the minimum exists, we're going to go ahead and write down the system. So this guy is the function that we want to max, uh, maximize or minimize in this case. And this guy is our constraint. So we write down the uh, derivatives. The derivative of x is 2x, 4y, 2z. And those are equal to lambda times partials with respect to x, so 3, y, and z. So we have the relation between x, y, z, and we have one condition also. We know 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 9. We'll go ahead and find x in terms of lambda. So this would be 3 halves lambda, y would be 1 half lambda, and z would also be 1 half lambda. If we plug this into the last equation, and the last equation, this is equal to 6, we get 3 times 3 halves lambda plus 2 times 1 half lambda plus a half lambda equals 6. So this gives us 9 half, 9 halves lambda plus lambda plus a half lambda equals 6. So this gives us 6 lambda equals 6. Lambda is 1, which means x would be 3 halves and y and z are both 1 half. So if we look at the quantity that they gave us, it would be 3 halves squared plus 2 times 1 half squared plus z squared, which is 1 half squared. So that's 9 fourth plus uh, 2 fourth plus 1 fourth. And if we simplify that, we would get 12 over 4, which is 3. Let's move on to the next problem. Find the minimum distance from a point on this surface to the origin. So what is the distance from a point on this surface to the origin? Well, the distance would be square root of, so let me write it down this way, the distance is square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So if you want to minimize this, we can just get rid of the square root to simplify things. So we will minimize whatever is under the square root. So f of x, y, z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Given the constraint, given g of x, y, z, which is 3z squared plus x squared plus 2x plus y squared equals 1. And we are told that the minimum distance exists. So we'll go ahead and find the partials, set them equal to lambda times the partials of g, and then we will solve the system. So partial of x, 2x, partial of, partial of f respect to x is 2x, partial of f respect to y is 2y, and partial of f respect to z is 2z. We set that as lambda times 2x plus 2, that's lambda times 2y, and this is lambda times uh, 6z. And then the constraint is g equals 1. So we'll start from the easiest equations. The easiest equations are the last two. So this one tells us y is 0 or lambda is 1. And this one tells us z is 0 or lambda is 1 third. So these are the uh, simplest equations. We'll take the first uh, uh, part of this guy and we'll see what we can do with the other one. So we have 
if y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0, so there are a few cases we'll have to take. Case 1 is y and z are both 0. So if y and z are both 0, we'll take these, plug it into the uh, equation that they gave us. We get x squared plus 2x equals 1, which means x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. So we'll evaluate that, we'll solve that, we get minus b plus minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This would be minus 1 plus or minus root 2. So this is our x. So let's evaluate f of negative 1 plus or minus root 2, 0, 0 to see what we get. We get negative 1 plus or minus root 2 squared. So that largest one is um, minus 1 minus root 2 squared and the other one is minus 1 plus root 2 squared so these are the two possibilities so we will get 1 plus root 2 squared and 1 um, and root 2 minus 1 squared these are the two possible minimum and maximum values and they ask us to find the minimum value so minimum value at this point would be this one okay so that's the first case the second case is so if we look back at what we had, we had y is 0 and x uh, z is 0. So we'll, we took care of that one. So now we have y is 0 and lambda is 1 third. So y is 0 and lambda is 1 third. So this is the second case. If lambda is 1 third, we can plug it into the first equation. We get 2x equals lambda, which is 1 third, times 2x plus 2. We can simplify this, we get 6x equals 2x plus 2. We will get 4x equals 2, which means x is 1 half. So we have x is 1 half and y is 0. The equation is going to be, if we plug in 1 half into the equation, we get 3z squared plus 1 half squared, so that was x squared, plus 2x, which is 1, plus y squared equals 1. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, we get 3z squared is equal to negative 1 fourth, which obviously is impossible. So the next case is going to be, we took care of all the cases when y is 0. So the next case would be when lambda is 1. If lambda is 1, and uh, we will take that and plug it into here, but that actually is impossible. So if lambda is 1, we will get 2x equals lambda times 2x plus 2. That gives us 2 equals 0, which is impossible. So the minimum distance is going to be uh, this guy, but I'll have to take the square root of that. So it is root 2 minus 1 squared but I have to take the square root of that because I squared the distance initially. So the answer is root 2 minus 1. So to summarize, in this, uh, uh, in this video, we talked about Lagrange multipliers theorem, and we, we looked at some examples. So I will see you in the next video.